Go ahead. But, you know, for me, like, like, same boat as Andy. When I travel with this and I, you know, plan to be writing stuff for the website, like when I go to a conference or something like that, I'm taking the Bluetooth Apple keyboard with me. And then, you know, when I'm uh, out and about in the day, I'll just have this. When I'm in the hotel room, you know, writing a story or something like that, I'll just put that Bluetooth keyboard on my lap and, and uh, you know, have yeah. something to actually click on. I don't know how ergonomic that is. I wonder... We'll have to get chiropractic. You're gonna have. You're all gonna have carpal tunnel. Well, Mike, what's your I, I take mean, on the? I'm never comfortable even with a laptop, though. Yeah. Typically, you know, I'm very socially awkward. So yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm never <laughs> comfortable in general. I'm not comfortable now. I don't know. Hotel desks are I always feel like a little boy. Like I always feel like a hotel <laughs> desk is up <laughs> here. It's you know, like, like, like I'm very typing. professional. Some they're like, this is. It's like cherry desk. It's like no one's desk looks this good except my dad's. Um, in the time I've had to type on it, it's, it gives me the same feeling in a in a sort of, you know. Hulk smash kind of way as I got with the first couple days of the iPhone typing yeah. that this is not it's not aligned with my muscle memory it feels awkward and I was going from the Blackberry to the iPhone so it took mm. it took a week or so and then I found oh I'm just as comfortable as I was before and I can I can type comfortably I think this will take the same amount of time and you know to, to John and Andy's point if your livelihood is meant is spent and in creating text you want a keyboard you want a physical keyboard right. But you can have one, so I don't think it's an issue. This is also going to be great for taking notes, right? You know, great battery life. Go to a conference, just leave it on all day, and mm -hmm. jot this, things this down. This is going to be the ultimate conference computer. Absolutely. On Sunday, I'm going yeah. to Boulder, Colorado, for one of those week-long things where I have to leave the house at 8:30. I won't be right. back yep. until 9 p.m. Yep. I really just need to write like a couple thousand words. I don't, but I have to take the whole office with me. This is going to be the, and I'm giving like eight panels, so I need to, to refer to notes and stuff. It's like I really wish that this that the conference were last well if it were last week I wouldn't be able to use it in public but <laughs> I just I just I just like buy buy a cheap netbook gut it out slide this in and make people think that this is actually the screen of like a, of an Asus. Well, you could fool anyone in Boulder, Colorado. It's the pot capital of the country. So, um, let's uh, play some games here. In fact, uh, let's take a look at my dream game. And this was my favorite April Fool's Day joke: the eye cat. Oh, yeah. I would. <laughs> and, and you know, it's funny actually. Even though it was an April Fool's Day joke. The follow-up today from Apple Insider is that this could happen. This could mm -hmm. be a real use case. Well, with this maybe, thing. maybe if they license the, the titles, but there. Oh, how awesome mm -hmm. that would be! Uh, I would never. I mean, I don't leave the house now, but I would never leave the house <laughs> even for food um, for that. Uh, Jason, let's talk about games. I'm playing here a uh, the uh, the iPhone version of Top Gun. Is this going to be a real gaming uh, platform? I mean, we've seen obviously the iPod Touch excel in that arena and take. Uh, you know, market share away from Sony and uh, and Nintendo in the handheld market. Is this going to do anything more? This product is certainly powerful enough to be a great gaming platform. I think the question is what form it takes. You know, will first-person shooters work well enough on it? Will the size be too awkward? We don't know. I mean, will strategy games be better? Will multiplayer, um, you know, those multiplayer role-playing games like World of Warcraft, will those work well on this? I think stuff like um, strategy games and board games and things like that are going to be really great on this because of the, the large screen. Well, Andy, what you tell me? Tell me about the Scrabble game. Yeah, I mean they're they're using all kinds of really cool ad hoc technologies. The, people, the the designers who are designing just for this device. There's a Scrabble game, and you imagine already how cool just Scrabble would be. Like any sort of those complicated tile move around games where you'd want to have like big touch interface and a big screen. And it's good enough like that. We can play Scrabble with someone where you sort of pass the board right. between each other. But the designers of this game understand that maybe more than one person who has uh, around the, this table have iPhones or iPod touches. So you can download a free client app uh, that's, that everyone who's working on their own iPhones will have their own personal tile racks that no one can see so they can rearrange their letters to get new tiles out of the rack. When they figure out when it's their turn they want to play a word they simply flick the tiles off of the phone they simply <laughs> land on the board and they can then place them. It's brilliant. Yeah. And uh, That's a nerdy party. They've got, the, <laughs> they've got the cheap version of Diana Krall theme music here. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's like the, the world's most expensive Scrabble game. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. See, it's, it's, you, just, you break down the cost. It's like it's, the real teardown should be how much does the display cost? How much does the processor cost? It's like, how much would it cost for a travel Scrabble game? Fifteen bucks, great. So, how much would it cost for uh, how much would it cost for for a tip calculator? Ten dollars, great. Yeah. All these little devices. That's how you sort of justify it to yourself. And I, I, I used to play a travel Scrabble game when I was a kid, like uh, with my sister. And you, you'd like be in the car or on a train or something like that, and you get jostled, and then they right. get, the the tiles yeah. go flying, right. and it's yeah. like, oh yeah. my god, what what? 
Yeah. What did I have? Yeah. You know, yeah. Forget it. Is that HD where racing? Is, that's yeah. HD racing. Whereas that's, this, if it falls, you just you know break again. the screen. That's made for. Was that made for? Is that potted up? For, uh, it was. Uh, it was. Well, that's. It is an HD game. It was. It was built for the iPad, but it was originally an iPhone game. So a lot of people are already familiar with it, but it's just a racing game. We have this beautiful like first like driver's perspective, but you're 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 steering like you're holding a steering wheel in your hand like this, and it vibrates as you hit the corners. I mean, the speakers. It, there's no there's no vibrating hardware on there, but the speakers are powerful enough to really drive a little bass and give you that feeling of can't talk playing. Yeah, and these shooter games where they can actually put controls on the left and right, right. sides of the screen yeah. that make absolute sense. You have a thumb pad on one, button pads on the other. Yeah. And these big labyrinth games, I'm playing the labyrinth game here, which is pretty incredible. Too hard. There's also going to be yeah. probably quite a few 3D games. Um, there, there's a number of people who've been saying we're going to we're going to develop games that require 3D glasses, and huh. you know if that if this becomes a sort of depth portal into the game environment, well, great. Um, and also. Uh, Win the wrong way. Jason, what's been? A, 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 have you yeah. downloaded any specific games, or have you been playing? Oh, Field Runners. Now that's one of my. Ulti oh, that's a. That's a winner. And, you know, there's so many of these games where you have to pan around on the iPhone, and it's like you got to zoom out, and then you can't see it. And you got to zoom in, and then you're moving back and forth. And I love Strategery, which is basically a risk <laughs> game, mm -hmm. and you can't play on a big map because you can't see it all at once. So yeah. all those games are better, like like Field Runners. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just so much better to have that extra room. All right, we're going to take a quick break here, another commercial break. Uh, we will be right back here on Gadgets and Games. One. suffers from high blood pressure. High blood pressure can lead to a heart attack or stroke. Get the facts. Know your risks. One in three people dot com. One. A lot of questions still about the Apple iPad <laughs> as we try to formulate and get our hands on this. I'm playing Field Runners here. Matt, take a look at this. This is a game, of course, Field Runners on the iPhone, but this is the one specifically designed for the iPad. Just beautiful. And I've often said, uh, there's, if there's one game that I want more than anything, it's Stratego that I want on the iPad eventually. So make it, please, somebody. Um, we got a uh, question from Kevin. Um, how well do the iPhone apps look when they are upscaled on the iPad? Pretty good. I mean, a little fuzzy. I mean, the, uh, like the Facebook yeah. apps, pretty fuzzy. Uh, I mean, I played Nova at the Apple event a couple months ago, and I have it on my iPhone, and I played the upscaled version, and it wasn't terrible, but it's, it's not beautiful. It's, it's usable. The problem is they don't. They, Apple clearly doesn't do anything to falsely make it look better. Right. I thought that like if you scaled up the text, at least the app knows. Well, this is supposed to be text at twelve point. We'll just render it at a higher resolution. Nothing doing. It's just wow. a bit doubling. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason, let's talk about uh, productivity apps, pages, and numbers, and keynote thoughts. Uh, you know, they're really complex. It's going to take some time to really understand what Apple's done because the user interface system, you know, it's not a mouse and a keyboard and you click and you use a menu. Now you're sort of typing with the, the keyboard and then grabbing things and turning them. And, um, you know, one of the interesting things they've done is change how you interact with files. There's still no file mm -hmm. system, but you now have now the system where you can, like, drag your files into iTunes and then they show up on the other side and you can save things out of those iWork apps and then mm -hmm. they show back up in iTunes and you can drag them back out and it's... You know, it's it's much more complex than what we're used to on the iPhone. Um, it could be good, but there, it, there's a lot to explore there yet. And, and I, well, I think that's the kind of sort of optimization where, you know, people say this is your next laptop or, you know, it's a netbook killer. 
uh, netbooks have things like like file system.